chemicals. They're all around us at home, at play, and at work. We use chemical products every day, and all of them can be hazardous. Some are dangerous. Some can be deadly. How do you know which chemicals are hazardous and which are safe? How do you know when to protect yourself or where to go for more information? If you work in any type of manufacturing, material safety data sheets provide that information for you. Do you know where the material safety data sheets are for the chemicals you use? Labels also provide information about the chemicals you use. Are the containers of chemicals you use labeled? Do you know what's in the containers in your workplace? TOSHA requires employers to provide information and annual training to employees about hazardous chemicals. Today, we're going to talk to an employee of a manufacturer here in Tennessee to see how much he knows about the chemicals in his workplace. This video contains scenes based on actual TOSHA inspections. The scenes were filmed at an actual worksite in Tennessee. This video was developed to help you recognize chemical hazards in your facility and to assist you in remembering the answers to TOSHA's seven questions regarding hazard communication. However, Mr. Ditzfud is not really an employee at a Tennessee manufacturer. We just made that part up. Mr. Ditchbud, my name is Albert Tish. I'm a compliance officer with Tennessee OSHA, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Very well. Um, Mr. Ditchbud? Yes. Mr. Ditchbud, have you received HASCOM training? Yes, I did. Can you tell me what that training was about? Well, it, was, it was about the hazards of chemicals, I believe. Good, good. Now, can you tell me about the chemicals you use on the job or the chemicals you might be exposed to here in the workplace? And look here, old man, I don't use any chemicals. I run this rather complicated piece of equipment here called a tube bender. I see. Well, could you tell me what's in these containers here? Well, that's the greaser. Hold on. That's obviously Gatorade. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. As you wish. Huh. Funny, that smells like cleaning agent 109. Who we'll put 109 in a Gatorade? Bloody yes! Cleaning agent in Gatorade bottle. And with this machine, do you use drawing fluid? Well, I guess one could say that. I did say that. Oh, right. Very well. I see your point. Well, then, in answer to your question, I am exposed to some chemical I suppose. I see you have nitrogen over there, and how about forklifts? Do they ever come into this area? Look here, old man, you're becoming rather a father. How do you think they deliver these raw materials to me? They don't fly in, you know. Well, sir, the forklift is powered by propane, a gas and the exhaust contains carbon monoxide, a potentially deadly chemical. Hmm. Quite. I see that too. Sometimes in the winter when we have the overhead doors closed, I do get the feeling a bit light-headed. Do you suppose then... Uh, do you use this degreaser to clean your equipment with? Yes, I get it. I don't know quite as much about these chemicals as I thought. They do give us a training class each year. I suppose I'd better stay awake next time. Can you tell me where the chemicals are stored? The drawing fluid is kept over there in the large blue tote. The degreaser is kept in the large container in the back. And uh, the forklifts travel uh, about the plant. Good. I think you got it. Thank you. Now, can you tell me about the short and long-term effects on the body of these various chemicals that you use? Hmm. Well, I, I really don't remember the training, but I'll give it a shot. Jolly good, sir. I know that when I use the drawing fluid, 
sometimes it causes my hands to break out. Mm -hmm. And the forklift exhaust yes. sometimes makes me dizzy. Good. I'm sorry, old man. Long and short term effects, I, I really can't remember them all. Okay, that's all right. You're on the right track. If you need to know more about the short and long term effects on the body, you reference the Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDS. The Material Safety Data Sheets, or MSDSs for short, provide information such as what's in the product you're using, what are the hazards, what are the potential health effects, and what type of personal protective equipment to use. The MSDSs are kept in an area where you can get to them. And Mr. Ditzbud, do you know where the MSDSs are kept? Yes, they're outside the supervisor's office. Good show, old man. I do wish you'd stop talking that way. Sorry. Now let me help you learn the long and the short term effects of these chemicals. Very well, proceed. Tennessee OSHA has a helpful booklet entitled the What to Do Booklet. It walks people through, step by step, how to put together a HASCOM program. On page 10 of that booklet are the seven questions that employees need to be able to answer. At the back of the booklet, on page C1, is a page called Bodily Effects of Chemicals. It shows short-term and long-term effects of chemicals on the body. Rather a bit long-winded there, eh? Well, maybe, but stick with me. It's important to know the short-term and the long-term effects of these chemicals on the body, because if there were no short-term and long-term effects, there would be no need for personal protective equipment, MSDSs, or warning labels on chemicals. Now, it just so happens that the first letters of the short-term effects spell out Ditzfud. How terribly clever. Dizziness, irritation, dermatitis, sickness, fever, unconsciousness, death. I would think death is rather a long-term effect. Yeah, I don't make them up. I just play by them. Dids fud. Hmm? I think I can remember that. Good. How about the long-term effects? Have you a cute way to remember those? Well, actually, yes, we do. I have to mix and match the letters a little bit, but they do spell out Dr. Bob Men's CB. CB? Mm-hmm. As in Citizens Band Radio. Right. Really, I thought you Yanks had moved on beyond Smokey and the Bandit. That's one of the greatest movies ever made. Well, anyway, the long-term effects are death, reproductive effects, and effects on blood, organs, bones, muscles, eyes, nerves, skin, as well as cancer and birth defects. Nicely done, old chap. Thank you. Now, do you know how to detect if you're overexposed to these chemicals? Oh, yes, I do remember that part of the training. Good. The company brings in men to test the quality of the air. If we're over the limit, they do something about that. Good, good. How do you protect yourself from overexposure? Well, I'm supposed to wear personal protective equipment, or PPE such as the safety glasses, earplugs, right. Kevlar, sleeves, yes. gloves, leather gloves, when, oh, when I remove the Very pots, good. and steel-toed shoes. Supposed to. Point taken, sir. I really didn't think about the danger of these chemicals. I work around them every day. Um. Have the written program and the MSDS has been explained to you? Yes. Good. Do you know where the written program is kept? Yes, it's with the MSDS. I did pay attention to some of the HASCOM training, eh? Very good, sir. Mr. Dinsmont, I think it's important to never forget how dangerous chemicals can be, and I think we're about done here. Is that a picture of your family? Yes. My wife and two children. Can you think of a better reason to stay healthy? No. No, I cannot. <laughs> Remember, all things are chemical in nature, and all chemicals can be hazardous, but you can work with them safely. In a nutshell, what you don't breathe won't hurt you, and what you don't get on you won't hurt you. If you have any questions about the chemicals you use, Ask your supervisor or your safety manager. 
Are we quite finished then? Yes, sir. Quite, and thank you. No, thank you. Glad to do it. Now then, about my Gatorade. While Mr. Ditchfun goes in search of his Gatorade, let's go over the seven questions that you need to be able to answer. What is this training about? What hazardous chemicals are you exposed to or may be exposed to during normal use or in a foreseeable emergency? Where is the chemical present? What are the short and long term effects on the body? How can you detect if you are overexposed to the chemicals? How can you protect yourself from overexposure? Have the written program and MSDS has been explained to you? Knowing the answers to these seven questions is important. Know about the hazards of the chemicals you work with. You have a right to know.